All right, guys. One more video for left tackles. We're going to get it all done in one day here. We're just going to bang it out, and then we're going to be moving on to the last couple positions starting tomorrow. Wanted to go ahead and just get this done now. I know it's not super compelling for people. I know left tackle's not the position to discuss right now with the Seahawks, but I wanted to be comprehensive. So three more guys we're going to look at here. We're going to start with a very fun guy, Tylen Grable of UCF, um, 24 years old. Got pretty good size, 6'6", 306 pounds, 33 and 5 eighth inch arms, which it's not great, but for a guy this late in the draft, it's workable. 10 and an eighth inch hands. Killed the combine. Murdered the combine. I mean, <laughs> this was some crazy stuff. And I know he's a little bit smaller than the average left tackle, so you would expect a little bit of it, but 4.9540, 1, 6, 9, 10 yard split, 36 and a half inch vert, one of the biggest verts ever by a tackle and nine foot nine inch broad. The guy's a freak athlete. Um, ESPN likes him enough to put him in the, um, I think that's like the early sixth. Now CBS has him undrafted, so does the database. So you're probably wondering, you know, what gives. Um, obviously his phenomenal athletic traits don't entirely show up on the football field yet. And until he can kind of get to that point, we're still dealing with a guy who is right now just a really good athletic specimen. Uh, the numbers last year were really good, though. I will say that. Only allowed 10 pressures, zero sacks, one hit, nine hurries. Big improvement over his pretty rough pass protecting in 2022. The testing numbers alone make this guy compelling. He's got great agility when he's in his pass uh, rush slides. And when he's moving in space and throwing blocks in space, you can see the uh, great athleticism. So he's somebody who's got the lateral agility and the just general straight line agility. He's really good with his hands. He's got strong punches, always trying to use his hands to gain advantages over the guys he's blocking. Understands leverage. He's 6'6", but he knows how to get low, be the low man, get his pads, get underneath the pads. Got a strong latch as well. So there's a lot to like with Grable. And at first blush, it seems like people have kind of slept on this one a little bit, but while his punches are strong, there's kind of a lack of placement with them, I think. He doesn't always place them rightly, uh, correctly. He doesn't always put them in the right place, which reduces their effectiveness. He's probably going to get a lot of holding calls in the NFL because of how grabby he gets. Um, while he is obviously very agile and mobile, he does get off balance in space, does kind of let his body get out in front of his legs, if that makes sense. Got to develop that actual feel for being able to play in space. It's not just a matter of, can I run fast in a straight line? You got to do it. So just in general, he needs a lot of development. He needs a lot of work. And that is why there's a very limited amount of interest in him. That being said, I love players like this. Like, you could almost look at this guy. This guy is like, he's almost Reek Woolen playing left tackle instead of cornerback. Right? Like, he wasn't a very good player. Although, I will say, I think he was better than Woolen was in college and he tests like a maniac and he's got NFL caliber size. It's like a lot of potential years away from cashing in on any of it. You know, it worked with uh, pretty good with woolen, right? We got some good stuff out of uh reek woolen over these last uh, couple of years. All of his problems should be fixable. Maybe, maybe one or two things won't be, but most of his problems will be fixable by good coaching. So I'm intrigued. Give them to me in the fifth round. I'm, I'm willing to, even pull a little bit harder on this one than I should. It might be fool's gold, but you know what? In the fifth round, how wrong can you go? This guy has a chance to be really, really good at um, zone blocking scheme stuff. KT Leviston is our next guy here, a Kansas State guy. So he was playing with uh, Cooper Bebe over in Kansas. 24, pretty big, 6'4", kind of short, which is not a bad thing. 326 pounds, though, so he's got some serious uh, weight to his frame. 34 and 5 eighths arms, nice. 9 and 7 eighth inch hands, workable. Testing was rough. The testing was rough. His only really good um, event was the broad jump, 9 feet, but he was slow, really bad acceleration, uh, mediocre vertical, bad change of direction stuff. Bench press was okay, I guess, but the testing was disappointing. And um, every big board that I use has him going undrafted, including the database. Um, the last two years, his numbers in terms of pass protection have also not been very good. 
two years combined, he's allowed seven sacks, seven hits, and 38 hurries. So kind of getting his quarterbacks killed a little bit. He's not graded out that well either. So Leviston um, kind of not bringing a ton to the on his resume that you like going into um, going into 2024. So the thing that stands out about him would be his size. I'm, for a guy who's probably going to go as a UDFA, he looks like he should be a starting left tackle in this league. He's he's big. He's got long arms. Uh, he handles himself well in space on the tape. I know the testing is bad, and that should be a factor. But it's maybe like Oluwatimi, right? Oluwatimi did not test well at all, really. But he can handle himself in space because we saw him do it a million times at Michigan. He's powerful in his run blocking. He's got a lot of power. He's a stronger player. He's uh, stronger than a lot of these late round left tackles we've been looking at. So he is bringing something to the table that some of the previous guys just don't have in their game yet. And I could see Leviston maybe moving out to right tackle to take advantage of his strength. I could see him moving to left guard. It wouldn't surprise me if he ends up being like a utility man, somebody who can play a few different positions, not necessarily be great at any of them, but be workable. Could be kind of like uh, maybe what we have with Jake Curhan, where Curhan was kind of sort of workable at tackle and guard. He wasn't good, really, but he was playable. So that might be something that works well for us. And I think he'll be scheme flexible as well. He'll be able to do zone. He'll be able to do gap and get away with both. Now, that's assuming the testing numbers aren't reflective of what he can do. So some issues, counter moves will eat him up, his pass sets. He's somebody who oversets when he's protecting against speed. So the guys who will like try to get the edge with their speed and then counter move back to the inside, tough for him to regain the rep against them. Um, guys who are able to do like swim moves on him after trying to get the edge with speed, tough for him to do. Uh, the testing scores are still troubling and we have to wonder how much of his move skills are going to translate to the NFL level because he's just not very athletic. He gets off balance and bends at the waist when he was uh, making contact with defenders. Gets a little over aggressive and just kind of leans in at the waist, which definitely shouldn't be doing. Um, definitely shouldn't be doing that if you can avoid it. It leaves you susceptible to moves, and he just needs more variety in the way he attacks uh, defenders in his sets. Like you need to be able to throw various um, various uh, hand moves at guys in order to keep them guessing, and he's just got a limited amount in his uh, bag of tricks. So. The poor testing has kind of killed the hype here. There is some compelling potential based on his tape, though. I don't want to get completely away from that. And I like the fact that he's probably going to be flexible across at least a couple different positions. Like, I don't know if he's a left tackle, but he might be a right tackle. He might be a left guard. Uh, these things may work out for him. He, his ability to um, get beaten by counter moves could be mitigated if he moves inside. So, seventh round is okay. I can't imagine anything going wrong with picking KT Leviston in the seventh, but I'm not super enthused about him for sure. One more guy, one more guy. It's another fun one, though. It's Frank Crum of Wyoming. Not often you get a Wyoming player in the draft, but when you do, sometimes they really, really pan out. Seen that recently. Uh, bigger guy, 6'8", 313 pounds, 33 and 7 eighth arms, workable, 10 and a half inch hands. So he's got roughly NFL size, and the testing was excellent, man. Another brilliant 40, 494, 169, 10 yard split. So it's very similar to what we were just seeing with uh, Grable. Good vert, good, really, really good broad, actually. I don't want to shortchange him there. Good uh, three cone as well. So his change of direction is nice. 20 yard shuttle, not so much. It was still okay. Bench press, eh. That's not really what we're talking about with Crumb, right? We're not looking for a super strong guy here. We're looking for a guy who can play in space. Crum looks like he is that. Now, ESPN and CBS both have him undrafted. The database has him hanging on to the back end of the seventh. And you can see that his performance at Wyoming has not been that good. Last year, he allowed four sacks, three hits, 13 hurries. He's not playing elite competition at Wyoming, so the performance isn't there yet. He was actually better in 2022 overall in terms of pass protection. So, you know, you uh, proceed with caution. But he's a phenomenal athlete with four full years of starting experience in college. It's at Wyoming, but he knows how to play this position. He looks good when he climbs up to the second level to lay blocks on like linebackers and defensive backs even. He's got the strength to hold his ground and anchor down against bull rushers. Um, 
He's got a good firm latch as well. He doesn't let go once he uh, latches onto a defender. And he handles twists and stunts respectively. He's uh, cerebral. He's high IQ. He's able to uh, adjust to things he wasn't expecting mid-rep, mid-set, mid-play. He does overset against speed rushers. He's another one of these guys who has to scramble so much to get outside that they end up giving up the inside against speed rushers. So some people are going to take advantage of that. He bends in the waist and gets beaten because of it. He's another one of these guys who just is so eager to get into contact. He'll bend at the waist and be susceptible to a like a swim move. Lateral quickness is not that great, which is disappointing given how good he tested, but his lateral quickness is not as good as his straight line and general quickness. And he loses balance and ends up on his butt way too much. He ends up on the ground a lot. So you watch his tape, you will see him end up on the ground way too much here. So he's a fascinating specimen, but he's not quite where he needs to be in the areas that really count, right? Like Offensive linemen who can move in space like this are great, but you also but it's actually more important to be able to move laterally, and I don't think his lateral movement skills are all that. Um, I do think there's some real potential here regardless, and he's got strength as well. So there is a um, appealing prospect here. I'd say sixth round. I'm not against it in the sixth. I, I don't think I'm crazy here, man. The, the, this kind of athletic profile is going to do something. All right. I will see you guys later. Go Hawks. That's it for today. Tomorrow we move on to a new position. There are only a couple left, so we're going to be wrapping things up shortly here. Thank you for hanging on with me. We are almost to the end of this. We do have almost, well, actually, I think approximately another week left. Probably It's probably going to end up being a little more than a week because there's these last two positions are so big and then there's some cleanup to do, but we're getting there. See you guys later.